In this video, let us understand respiratory system structure and function within 5 to 10 minutes. Let's begin with what is a respiratory system. A respiratory system, as you see, is a network of organs and tissues that helps in breathing or exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Breathing involves two processes. First one is inhalation or intake of oxygen to the inside and the second process is exhalation where carbon dioxide is expelled out of the system. Now let us move into details of each structure starting with the nostril. Nostril as you see it is one of the two openings in our nose through which the air moves when we breathe and smell. The second structure is the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is lined with mucous membrane. It warms and humidifies the inspired air. It removes and traps pathogens from the inspired air and is responsible for sense of smell. As you see, there are olfactory nerves here that sense the signal to the brain and also drains and clears the paranasal sinuses and lacrimal ducts. So nasal cavity humidifies the inspired air and is also responsible for the sense of smell. The third structure is the oral cavity. Oral cavity is a pathway for both air intake and also food intake. It is the part of both respiratory system and also digestive system. Oral cavity is a major pathway for air intake and exhalation other than nose. The next structure is the throat or pharynx. So this is the pharynx. It's a muscular tube that connects the nasal cavity to the larynx. So this is the larynx. So this is a nasal cavity. So it connects the nasal cavity to the larynx and esophagus also involved in both digestive system and respiratory system, a common pathway for the movement of air and food. The next structure is the larynx. Larynx is also called as voice box. Let me zoom in this structure. So this is larynx. It's a hollow tube of about 4 to 5 cm in length and width through which air passes from throat to trachea. So this is the trachea. On the way to our lungs, it also contains the vocal cords and functions as voice box for producing sounds or phonation. One more structure here. There is an epiglottis, a flap of cartilage located in the throat that is behind the tongue and in front of the larynx. It prevents food and water from entering the trachea and the lungs. It stays open during breathing, allowing air to move into the larynx. The next structure is called the trachea or windpipe. It's a cartilaginous tube that carries air in and out of the lungs from the larynx to the bronchi. It serves as passage of air, moistens and warms it when it passes through this trachea. It protects the respiratory surface from accumulation of foreign particles. There is mucus in the trachea that traps debris and other foreign particles. Then the inner lining of trachea has cilia that helps to propel the dust away from the lungs. The next structure is called the bronchus. Let me zoom in this structure. So this is the bronchus. These are large airways, two large tubes that carry air from the windpipe or trachea into the lungs and back out from the lungs. The main bronchus splits further to form secondary bronchus and tertiary bronchus. So this trachea splits to form two primary bronchus, one to this right lung and the other to the left lung. It is a large airways that carries air to the lungs and from the lungs. The next structure is the bronchioles. Bronchioles are the smallest airways in our lungs. They are the final air conductors that lack cartilage. The major difference between bronchiole and bronchi is bronchi has cartilage and it is the fine smallest airways that branches off from the bronchi and that leads to fine air sacs called alveoli. Let me zoom in. So this is the bronchi, then these are the bronchioles and that ends in fine microscopic balloon shaped sacs called alveoli. So this is the alveoli. Alveoli are microscopic balloon shaped structures located at the end of the respiratory tree. They expand during inhalation, taking in oxygen and shrink during exhalation, expelling carbon dioxide. These tiny sacs are the site where gas exchange between inspired air and blood takes place. The next structure is the lung itself. So this is the right lung and this is the left lung. They are a pair of spongy pinkish gray organs located in our chest. When we inhale, 
or breathe in, air enters into the lungs and oxygen from that air moves into the blood. At the same time, carbon dioxide or the waste gas moves from your blood to the lungs and is exhaled or breathed out from the system. So this right lung and left lung are similar but asymmetrical. Right lung has three lobes, the right upper lobe and this is the middle lobe and this is the left lower lobe or inferior lobe. Whereas left lung has only two lobes. The first one is the upper lobe or superior lobe and the second lobe is this inferior lobe or the lower lobe, left lower lobe. The next structure is the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle, as you see, that helps to breathe in and breathe out, that sits below the lungs and the heart. And finally, as we said, this left lung is smaller compared to this right lung and with only two lobes. Let me zoom in this region. So as you see, the left lung is slightly smaller and has a notch to give space or room for the heart called as cardiac notch. So this left lung and right lung are asymmetrical. Right lung has three lobes and is larger compared to left lung that has only two lobes. Let me summarize. Starting from nostril, then moving into the nasal cavity, then the air also is taken in through this oral cavity. Then this nasal cavity has a filtration capacity whereas oral cavity doesn't have a filtration capacity. This oral cavity is a common pathway for both food and air. Then it reaches the pharynx. It is also a common pathway for food and air. From the pharynx, it moves into larynx, which is also called the sound box, then moves to trachea. Till trachea, from nasal cavity or nostril, this is called as the upper respiratory tract. From trachea, large airways, two large tubes that separate splits to both right lung and left lung, which is called as a bronchus. Primary bronchus further splits to form secondary bronchus and tertiary bronchus. The fine, smallest airways at the end of bronchus is called bronchioles. They are the final air conductors that lack cartilage. Then this bronchioles then leads to microscopic balloon-like structures which is called as alveoli that is involved in gas exchange between inspired air and the blood. And finally, this structure, this diaphragm is the dome-shaped muscle that helps to breathe in and breathe out that is located just below the lungs and the heart. Left lung and right lung are asymmetrical. Right lung is made up of three lobes, slightly larger than the left lung. Left lung is made up of two lobes, a top lobe or a superior lobe and an inferior lobe. Then there is a cardiac notch that provides space for heart. Hope you are clear with the structure and function of respiratory system. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.